Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Rebound Coach Live. This is Dallas Cohen, The Rebound Coach, and I am so excited that you're here today. We have a very special guest uh, coming on this evening. Uh, but before we get to our special guest, I'll tell you just a smidge about why we might be here today. If it's your first time meeting me, if uh, this floated up on your newsfeed or you happen to be in the clubhouse hallway and this just popped over and you're like, what is this about? Um, what is the Rebound Coach Live and what exactly is a Rebound Coach anyway? <laughs> um, let me introduce myself. I'm Dallas Cohen, the Rebound Coach and rebound, uh, coaches, life coaches help you get unstuck. And so um, I am a coach around relationships, and that is because I've struggled in my relationships. And so, um, like a lot of women, uh, we might grow up in strong faith-based homes, but uh, suffered sexual abuse as a child. Um, that actually happens to, I think, uh, one out of every four women experience that. And it's probably one out of every two in the African-American community. So it's very, very common. And that happened to me from the time I was eight to the time I was 16. And so that radically affects how you see yourself growing up. For me, how I related to God in a faith-based home and how I related to men. So fast forward, when I met the man I married, there were definitely red flags Okay, definitely red flags. Um, but number one, I believe that God was with us in, in approval of us as a couple. Number two, I believe that um, because of that, whatever challenges would come, we'd be able to overcome them right away or overcome them eventually. Well, uh, trouble came right away and never quite went away. We got into a cycle that I called coping to crisis, where we're kind of barely making it. And then eventually there's a big crisis that blows up and then we're barely making it again. And uh, that was my life. Hey, Apostle Marguerite, glad you're here today. Um, that was my life for the 10 years I was married. And come January 2020, um, everything just kind of came to a head. The, uh, the man I'd been married to for about 10 years by then uh, left for another woman. And the next day I found out him and that woman had been plotting my murder for months. And that sounds like a, a line from a movie, but it's it was my real life, um, as crazy as that was. And so immediately everything stops. You're, <laughs> yeah, everything stops. You're threatened on every level um, as, as a woman, as a mom, as a wife, um, and as a coach. I had been uh, coaching around relationships and marriage for about five or six years. So if you can imagine your entire identity being built on this idea of staying married and living in covenant. And uh, this is the only way to honor God in a, in a marriage is to stay married no matter what he's doing. And that be the very thing that falls apart in your hands. Um, it was, it was actually, it was a really big turnaround for me. And the way I share that with people, the way I tell the story is, you know, I could allow the, um, the, identity that my former husband had for me that I had agreed to, right? So we talk about abusers being oppressors. We as people who have been abused play a part. Doesn't mean we're at fault. It means that it's a dance and there's two people dancing. And so I had agreed to a certain identity that he had for me. Um, and I had the choice at that point to allow that to tell me who I was, or I could choose life. So out of that story came a memoir. The name of the book is I Choose Life, Rewrite Your Love Story and Change Your Legacy. And that's exactly what it is that we're doing. And I have the, the great, great, great honor to walk alongside women, high achieving women of faith who have experienced betrayal, trauma or abuse of any kind, childhood or adulthood, no matter from who. And they want to, at this point in their lives, reclaim territory in their relationship with themselves. They want to change things in their heart, in their mind, in their life, in their love life, in their romantic life, in their spiritual life, and, and change what it is that they pass down to the next generation. It's been such a sacred honor. And I have an amazing woman to introduce you to today. So this is March. March is Women's History Month, uh, where a lot of folks uh, think about and talk about uh, the contributions of women in history. And 
my contribution to this month is to share living legends. I want to share stories. I'm calling it Women's Her Story Month and sharing the stories of unsung sheroes. And I am so inspired by this woman that I'm going to introduce you to today. Her name is Debrea, uh, Evangelist Debrea to be exact. And I, I guess I'll let her share how we met, but um, she was a surprise to me. She was a surprise to me. And I'm almost going to like tear up just, just introducing her. Um, but she just, she warms my soul and, and I believe she's going to warm yours. So without further ado, I want to welcome evangelist Debrea Bowman to the Rebound Coach Live. Thank you for joining me tonight. Good evening. Good evening. It's such an honor to be on with you. And it has been a pleasure. Um, I met you indirectly mm -hmm. when you spoke on CEK Ministries. And it was like, wow, it was such a testimony. And it really, I, I was able to cap into it, but I could relate to so much of it. So, and let me tell you about Dallas. That The way <laughs> you see Dallas, you hear Dallas, that's the way she was. So you got to picture this now. I never met her in person. So when I had the opportunity <laughs> to meet her, it was like, Wow, she's the same way. She's funny. I mean, she'll make you laugh. She'll make you cry. She'll soothe your soul. I mean, the way God used her is just awesome. She is truly a woman of God. And for that, I am so thankful and so grateful that I had an opportunity to meet her first. But it was a great opportunity we was able to indirectly work together. <laughs> Oh, we're not going to do this so early in the show. We're not going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, she was, I have a talk show. It's called Creative Live. Uh -huh. she was, we did a two-part series because it was too much to jam into one. And I wanted my viewers to be able to savor what she was sharing. So I do want to thank you again for being on Creative Live. So once again, I am happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again. And so when you, so um, Apostle Marguerite, who's actually here, um, also on the on the live, so I'm grateful that she's Yay. she's here listening. Apostle's in. here. Yay! Yay! It's a family <laughs> affair. Um, so. We have an event called Sanctuary, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, but in the midst of that, you know, I bring a team together of powerful facilitators, powerful leaders to facilitate healing and love. And, and I would say tangible love, right? Yes. Like, like love you can walk in and sit in and dwell in and feel through and through. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we, we create this really sacred spaces. And so I asked Apostle Marguerite to join me um, in helping facilitate that weekend. And she said, well, I have someone who assists me. Her name is Evangelist Debrea. Can she come? And I'm like, well, sure. And so I had not met you and I didn't even meet you indirectly prior to this event. So no. it was the first time me learning about you. And I was like, okay, well, we'll get to meet her when she comes. <laughs> and um I'll let you take it from there. So, so that's how you ended up at Sanctuary. But what was yeah. kind of uh, and and I didn't and, and let's back up. So I didn't hear your story until like day three, yeah. <laughs> day two, or day three, day three, day three. I didn't know any of your story. So if you could share, um, kind of where you were. And so, like I said, I, I serve women who have lived through betrayal, trauma, and abuse of any kind. So if you could share as much as you're comfortable sharing, okay. what what's your story in that area? Okay, my story in that area is that from, I, I always tell pay, people that from the womb, okay, mm -hmm. I was rejected from there. So I was birthed being rejected. Mm -hmm. I grew up being rejected. I was everybody's sex toy. So I grew up to a point where 
I didn't like men. I didn't like women. I guess to test basically human beings. It was like, why are you here? You know, you treat me like I'm a nobody. Mm. Um, but I'm not saying that 365 days of the year was terrible. But most of the days that was bad outweighed the good days. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I can definitely say that I went to church and even in church there was things going on that should not been going on in church of course, with me. Of course. Of course. So, so uh but that was an outlet somewhat. Mm -hmm. Um school was really my outlet. That was the only time I was allowed to really go out was mm -hmm. to go to school and was very time constraint strength. You know what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. it took five minutes to get to school, you're gonna leave five minutes and you're gonna be on time. Okay. So one day I was on my way to school and everybody's already at school in the playground, wherever they're doing. I wasn't allowed to play with children at all mm. uh, or have any friends. Um, I got raped. Mm. And I remember that not so much like clearly with pain. I look at it differently now before it would be like, ugh, you know, I was, you know, felt dirty, I felt unclean. It was just, it was horrifying. Mm -hmm. And besides, I was already going through so much anyway. So I was so scared. Instead of going back to the house, I went to school because oh. I wasn't allowed to be late. It was like, oh, oh my God, I'm going to get beat. I'm late for school. Now here I'm going to school. Okay, just got attacked. Hmm. So I am in no condition to really be going too fast anywhere. Right. I got to school and um, they, you know, and the principal was like, wait a minute, we got to call you up. No, no, no. She's going to get me because I'm late for school. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's wow. Okay. You know, and I, I said, some, some, some guy, he, he gets, you know, and you have to realize this. I didn't know what was really going on because for everybody, I was born in the 50s. Well, actually, mm -hmm. 50. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so things then was not, and, and you know, I was little. I was like, I was in third grade. I remember that. Uh -huh. I was in third grade when that happened. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, you know, everything went totally downhill. Mm -hmm. I still didn't have any friends. I wasn't allowed to have any friends. I wasn't allowed to go out. My mother and he would I would always will call her my mother he was not my biological mother mm. um he adopted me strangely and that's a whole nother story we won't go into but the thing the thing was she did not beat me mm. but I remember these words he said you should have walked faster and it wouldn't happen to you wow so making it your fault yeah it was my fault it was my fault. Wow. Because if I had walked faster, the person wouldn't have caught up with me. And, you know, mm -hmm. and you should always be looking behind and you should be aware of your, you know. But I wasn't. Yeah. Then, you you know, people was just yeah. going. So someone had told her, well, you know, maybe you should let her go. We, like, well, at least when some of the children are still going to school, you mm -hmm. know. Um, she wasn't really going for that. She's, you know, so she let me maybe like two minutes before, you know, sort of like the five minutes. Now I had seven minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, don't, wow. And it, it, it was really, really, um, my childhood was very abusive. Um, people say, well, how was your childhood? And it was like, uh, do we really have to talk about this? You know, wow. and I, I don't, the only thing I remembered um, was that she likes to go to movies. And she was a cosmetologist, right? You know, working with hair. So Mondays the shops was always closed. So we used to go to movies. So that was the, the outlet and going to the museums and you know, so culture wise, I knew how to sew, crochet, knit. I could strip a lot, you know, change a lot. I mean, all the domestic stuff, you know, yeah. I was good at because I was at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, and I grew up with gray head, gray hair, purple hair, blue hair people. And that wasn't okay. in the style then. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, a couple of things I, I want to just bring attention to. First of all, thank you for your bravery in sharing mm -hmm. your story. There are so many women who were born in the 50s that have yet to face their trauma. Um, mm -hmm. Abuse is nothing new, rape is nothing new. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Children growing up in unsafe homes is nothing new. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a generational problem. It's, it's been around since people have been around. And so number one, thank you for being brave enough, strong enough to come on this very public forum. And by the way, we are simulcasting on clubhouse. So there's some ears over there as well. Okay. I'm just very, I'm very proud of you uh, for in, in your, in 2022, you know, no matter how old someone might become, the stories don't go away unless we handle them or face them and work through them. So thank you for that. The other thing I want to raise, and I'll allow you to continue. Um, the other thing I want to raise is I think, and I've caught myself in, in this too. I have two young children, one's in fourth grade, one's in fifth grade. And so it touched me when you said third grade. I was like, man, I, I have kids that age. Mm -hmm. um, but when when something happens, it can be easy for me as a mom to go, oh, you should have X, Y, Z. And then I'm not talking about abuse situations, but, you know, just just random stuff. Your kid does this. Well, next time do it that way. Okay. Right. Just has a very natural parental response. And so I, I'm, uh, I don't even have the words. Like I am just, mm -hmm. um, I guess, introspective. And I think all parents, especially parents of young kids, you know, that can be kind of a trigger response. Like, well, fix it, right? Fix it. Whereas situations of abuse are not that. It doesn't qualify for that. Because the abuser chose to abuse, whether that's, you know, in a, in a rape situation um, or emotional abuse or adultery or pornography, like all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we carry into adulthood. Many, many, many women carry. It was my fault. It's true. It's whether that happened in childhood or adulthood, it, it's my fault. Um and maybe we get that from childhood or culture or a, a mix, um, mm -hmm. but it's definitely it's definitely something that's a trend. So I just wanted to shine a light on that. If uh, you think it's your fault, that might have been why. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is, and and into adulthood, is there any parts of your story you want to share? Well, because. When you grow up alone and you have no, basically, I grew up alone. I didn't really have a family. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, you know, no sisters and no brothers, none of, none of that until I got into really my adulthood that I did find out more about my past. So I didn't have any cousins. I didn't have no aunts, uncles. So it was like, I was just stuck in the house. <laughs> Yeah. So that trick that that stayed with me. So even when I I had I, I was fed up, and I remember I was supposed to grad. Well, I did graduate, but I was seventeen years old. All right now. And I said, I'm out of here. Okay. I literally left, and I was had started. I was in college, and I was working in um, like in the guidance counselors, you know, office. So I, I was saved up my money. And I left. I ran away hmm. because I wasn't 18. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I did. And I ended up living in, at the Y. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I lived at the Y. And back then, I don't even know what the rooms were. It's like they then. let you? <laughs> right? That's well, I because I was in college. So I had a college ID. Oh. So a lot of college students, you know, they would. You know, if they went near or they was out of state or whatever. So okay. You know, so mm -hmm, I got. I was wow. Am I happy? Ooh, I was so happy. You know. Now you got to realize this: this person who's been in custody. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. Not experiencing anything too much of the world except what was experienced on her. Mm -hmm. Still going to school. I would walk to school, I was happy, you know, and then what happened was then I started experimenting mm. because it was like, it was like, if you didn't, if I wasn't, if, you know, 
oh, you funny? Back then, they used to call him like Butch. You know, it's like, oh, you must be one of those. I was like, well, no. okay. well I don't see you with anybody. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm fine. Because I wasn't used to being around people. Mm -hmm. So then it started to the point where, okay, before I was fitting into this older group, because everybody was older. So now I'm trying to fit in with more of my age group that I really couldn't fit into that. So I was mixed between the two identities of what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But I realized now that I wasn't supposed to fit in. I was pushing myself into it. But the grace of God, he, wow. knew, he protected me. He covered me to the point where, and I have told this story before. I got to the point, even when I before I left home, I wanted to commit suicide. I tried three times. Wow. Three times I tried. Wow. Each time I failed. And when the third time I didn't succeed, thank God, I says, you know what? They're right. I can't do anything right. I can't even kill myself. Wow. That's where my mind was. Yeah. That's where my mind was. And this was adulthood. Yeah. This is when I was in my 20s. I had got married. I had children. But it was like, I, I can't, can't deal with this. Because then what happened was, you know how the, the saying say, you know, you, you, um, um, you know, I jumped out of the skillet into the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I married an abusive person. Mm. And I became their battering ring. Wow. And I was constantly being beat and kicked. And to the point, you know, I shared this on another platform with my daughter. To the point, so it's not a secret mm -hmm. that I left my children because it's either I was going to die <laughs> or I was going to kill somebody. Mm. Okay. And I took them with me, but then I was being threatened. You know, if you don't come back, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, blah, blah, blah. you know, if you don't bring my kids back, they're my kids, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. It was like, I can't live like this. I guess can't. We did leave, like I said, came, you know, he I, that was their father. And he was never abusive to them. Because trust me, they if I saw that, that would have been over. He was never abusive. No matter how bad a shape he may have been, mm. he never showed any abuse to the kids. So I do I do want to take us take a pause there because that's a common phrase you hear among survivors. Well, he beat me, but he didn't beat the kids. He abused me, but he didn't abuse the kids. So when children are in a household of domestic violence, that is abuse. Their yes. witness of mm -hmm. abuse is abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, there's not a way. And, and some people might disagree with me here and that's all right. Like we're all allowed to our opinion, but you're here mm -hmm. on my show. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that someone can be an abusive husband, but a good father. Exactly. Right. I don't believe that that is, that is the case. Here's something that we all have to face. How you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if I'm a procrastinator over here, I'm a procrastinator over there, right? If I don't keep my commitments here, I don't keep them over there. If I don't know how to treat my wife, I don't know how to treat my kids. Exactly. Okay, that's the way it is. If you if you create that household, my my I lived in a battle zone. I know what that is. So there's no way that any child in that household is not affected. It's it true. is abuse to witness abuse, and the mm -hmm. professionals know that too. So just mm -hmm. needed to say that. Okay, no, because that's important. It's, it's it's very very true because. The emotion, because I, you know, and when you're in something and, and you don't know what, where to go or who to talk to and think, you will make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. And the decisions that you make will govern your life. I made the wrong decision. I have to, I had to live with that for so many years. Mm. So many years. I regret it. I still regret it. But God has healed me that I can talk about it because I don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through. So there you, was fear, so much fear. 
I was, I didn't want to stop you, but I, I wanted to ask, how was it that you got out? And, and more important than that, what was the decision maker for you that say, you know what, this is it, enough's enough, I'm done with this. What was that for you? When I knew that he was going to kill me. I knew he was. And I, it was like, okay, if you come back, I'm going to kill you. It was like, yeah, but I want to, you know, they're my kids. No, you come back. And because of what I had gone through, you know, and I didn't have anyone. I didn't know anyone really. I didn't know, you know, do I go to the police? I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. Mm. I didn't have anyone to talk to. I couldn't call mom and say, well, you know, this is happening. Can I come back? I, I didn't have anyone. So I made the decision because I said, if I go back, it's not, he ain't going to kill me. It's going to be the other way around. Mm. And I did not want, and I was saying, well, then they wouldn't have any parents. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So that was a decision that I made based on what I was using, which was mm. not wisdom. It was not the right thing to do. That's why I tell my story. That's why I tell people, you know, now it's, it's more public size and, you know, it's more help out there. I'm not saying it wasn't help. I just didn't know. I didn't even have a phone. You know? Wow. <laughs> no, it was no phone in the house, you know. Wow. That was way before cell phones, everybody, you know. Um, yeah, but there used to be house phones. Like the 50s, there were there were telephones. Yeah, That's I know. Cool. Well, this is like, okay, we came out of the 50s now, Dallas. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. No, 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 we no, we had phones. There was telephones. No. <laughs> I remember the phones because they used to lock them up. But anyway, they used to put little locks on the phone so you could use them. Wow. But like I said, um. It was years. It was so many years. And I used to go down the street and say, oh, oh, you know. And um, it took decades, and I mean decades and decades, before I was able to see my children again. They uh, was adults. They were grown. They had children. Wow. You know. But God allowed me to meet them again. Um, my daughter, um, Nicole, you know, she's very supportive. He's all, he's an elder. Okay. He's a teacher. Mm -hmm. He has, um, I have two grandsons and I have two great grandchildren. Okay. You no. Know, and it, it, it's, it's God, it's, it's, it's amending, you know, it's mending, it's healing, you know, cause I go through certain emotional changes and things. And then I can relate to how he she can feel too. Mm. But God is healing it. He's mending it. He's molding it. And in the midst of that, my son, Adam, he died mm. year before last. Um, and we was working on a relationship. And when he died, I remember talking to the Lord and I said, wow. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to be able to meet him and see him and saw his daughter. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, we'll call every now and then. You know, we had a conversation going and we'll say, hey, mom, how you doing? And that's one thing my children never would, you know, they always said, mom, mom. Mm, they wow. always called me mom. So were they were they raised by your ex -husband? Their father. They was raised by their father. Mm-hmm. And I was looking and kept looking and kept looking and I never could find, I even got to the point where I'm with my pastor mm -hmm. and I was saying, you know, he's, he's, I says, I got to find him. I got to find him. And, you know, and I remember so clearly, he says, God said that you will see your children again. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a, a inner peace. Mm -hmm. And he also said, one of them, is saved. Wow. So that was good. So anytime I would get kind of like, you know, she would come back around and God would use her to, mm -hmm. to get some encourage me. Wow. You know, to I'm hold just so, on to that. 
I'm just so inspired. This is a part of the story I'd never heard. <laughs> and um, um, I'm so, number one, I'm really glad that you're here. Um, I'm glad that your story is being shared um, because people need to hear at least more parts in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but um I that's it's incredible. A lot of survivors really struggle. Um uh, they struggle to leave the abusive marriage because of kids. Um mm -hmm. and because of things like custody battles and long exactly. drawn out court situations. And and even in visitation situations a lot of women are like, "Man, they got to be around this abuser and he's mm -hmm. going to poison them against me." And your story is in the face of all of that saying it doesn't matter. God's still on the throne. Exactly. That's what I hear out yeah. of what yeah. you're saying, because not only were you reunited, but it wasn't foul. No, no, that is, that is incredible. No. no. And to that, I give God all the glory. All the glory. They never said that woman. That, you know, and I hear people say that. And I was like, always been like, mom, mom. I was like, wow. Look at wow. wow. And you said you did something else with your daughter recently. So the two of you. Yeah, we was on platforms. And uh, we was in, I, uh, in fact, I guess uh, we was in the sorority together. And uh, I was in her. She was my president. <laughs> Oh my and God! She was my president. I was a chaplain of my chapter um, because of my work schedule and everything that's going on. Um, I was there for three years, and I, I guess resigned the end of last year. Oh wow! So you know, we did things together. It was, it was, it was really good. It was so, really, really good. Can you tell me uh, how old you were when you left that marriage? I was twenty. Okay, they were young. <laughs> they was very young. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty something. Young. Twenty, 20 something. something. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm gonna get it. Twenty to two. Okay. About twenty, I would say. I don't know. Nikki was like two or three. I don't know. It was like two. Or three. Yeah, because it wasn't in school yet. Okay. okay. Um. So I wasn't twenty five yet. I know that. Okay. So mm -hmm. so very fairly young, young adult, mm -hmm. yeah. and. If you can, you can give a roundabout if you want to, if you want to, um, if you're comfortable sharing how old you are today, how old you are now. If you, okay, look, you can say. No, me. no, I, I, I see your face. You something. <laughs> After trying, to, trying to out my lights and everybody else trying to out my lights. I can definitely give God the glory and tell him that um, I'm 71 years old. Do you hear this young Young woman, do you hear her? Do you see this beautiful light in her face? This beautiful light in her eyes. It's it's amazing. She amazes me on so many levels. Um, but the reason that I say that, so so the, the next question, what I'm getting to is mm -hmm. what were maybe remnants of trauma? And you've known God all your life, right? Um, and a lot of times when we get out of situations, we're like, oh, I'm done, I'm good, I'm out, I'm free that it's it's so much the work starts at that point <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so for you what would you say were maybe remnants or uh situations or things that kind of followed you after you know you were not in that abusive situation anymore you were away from your family of origin but what was still kind of plaguing what was plaguing is was I still felt dirty mm. and I felt unworthy. Um, I did get married again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, you know, it was like, and I did have two other children and then I got married again. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I have my youngest son the reason why, you know, because one part, I guess growing up, you know, watching the TV shows, you know, it was always a family. I yeah. always wanted a family, you know, a husband and and, and kids and a little poodle or whatever. You know, 
<laughs> well, I'm getting little picket fits, you know. Yeah. I don't know how they able to come up with two and a half kids. I never could figure that out. How do you have a half of a kid? Yeah, yeah. how are you gonna have a half of a kid? You know, I, I don't know. It's gonna be the two or three. <laughs> right. I, I never understood how they, they they used to say that. Um, those was my wants. I needed that. And I wanted to give all my, the love that I never received. Mm -hmm. I always talk about pure love, you know, and I can spot people. Oh, I love you. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is, is like an antenna goes up in me. It was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, for well, how long? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, and it was like children, mm. children, they get hurt. Like you, well, exactly what you were saying, you know, children see, children hear, children knows more than you think they know. Mm -hmm. And they absorb it, especially when they're young. They're like sponges. They get soaking all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So feeling dirty, feeling unworthy, feeling like, you know, I was a nobody. Mm -hmm. Even after I got saved, when I got saved, things started shifting the right way. Because as the apostle always say, you know, she said, no, it's turning the right way. Everything was already upside down. I said, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you have to realize I got saved. And I kept saying, gee, when I get to 40, some of those great rules, I was all excited about getting turning 40. Okay. <laughs> you know, most of you like 40, yeah. I did. When I turned 40, I got saved. Mm. And um, break an egg, everybody, in your mind. Just drop it. What does it do? Go it's splat. Nice. Yeah. Try cleaning it up now. It's, you feel, and then you feel a speck over here. It's okay over here. Well, that was me. Mm. <laughs> I got saved. And everything splattered. Mm. Everything that was not right in me came out. Wow. You know, being possessed me. I mean, everything. Everything that, and God did a clean sweep for me. But he didn't do it overnight. Mm -hmm. It took years mm -hmm. and years and years. Actually, it took until last year. He was still cleaning me out. Okay. I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> Y'all on Clubhouse can't see us, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Yeah. And I'll say if you and, and just uh just for housekeeping, um the link to the face my Facebook um is there, the reboundcoach.com, or actually I'm sorry, Facebook.com slash the rebound coach. You can click there and we are live on Facebook, so you can see us if you'd like to join the live that way. Um, but we're happy that you're here on Clubhouse. So, um, okay, so since last year, ah, so we had an event called Sanctuary last year. And I, for those who are watching along or who are going to watch the replay, I'm going to play a really short clip. Um, sure? about, well, this first one, real short clip um, about Sanctuary. And then mm -hmm. I want to talk about your experience there. So mm -hmm. hang, hang tight. So loud.
So that was just a little teaser. Um, I have the honor of creating sacred spaces to allow women to heal, to connect, to grow. And we did our very first event called Sanctuary, not my first event, but the first event called Sanctuary um, in September of 2021. So last year, um, not so long ago. And mm -hmm. that's where I got to meet Evangelist Debrea for the first time. So let take me to like your first when you walked in there, like, what were you thinking? What, what did you think it was? And then what was it? Okay. When I first walked in, it was like, oh, wow, look at this. You had did, um, I always mispronounce it, the suka. Suka, yeah. Right, right. You did it, you did it. <laughs> um, I'm very interested in, well, okay, guess real quick. My two youngest sons, they went to Hebrew school, nursery school. So it, because of the customs, you know, we had to follow. It, and I was so interested in it. So I was like, mm. oh, wow, look at this, look at this. And, you know, the trees and everything. So when I walked in, but it was like walking into a, a, a different dimension. Wow. It was like when you opened the doors, it was like, oh, wow. Okay, and this 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 feels different. And Dallas took um, Apostle and I, Apostle Marguerite and I. He said, "Come, come, you know." She said, "It's like I'm looking." And she said, oh, "This is a lecture room." And I, well, what about questions? Mm. When we got to, I call it the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. If you never saw a picture of a tabernacle, if you never study it. The replica that was there was like, wow. You know, to the tapestry, mm. to the, the calmness, to the candles, to everything. It was so peaceful. And she walked us through, this is, you know, you, you know, they're going to do the massage and get the feet, you know, the washing, the prayer, the, the communion, all of that was there. And I was like, oh, this is God, this is really, really great. This is awesome. I thank you that I'm able to experience this. And because now you have to realize I came to assist. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> with, God has some amazing things. And you know, uh, you know, what the, the scripture says, a man or uh, plans his way, but God orders his steps, something like that. That's how I feel like that whole experience <laughs> was because. <laughs> You know, okay, so, all right, so you came to assist. However, um, there it was Saturday, the day we do our signature VIP experience, our signature mm -hmm. journey um, that, you know, it's essentially the sanctuary experience. And so uh, you got the opportunity yeah. to go through that. Yeah. <laughs> I, did. Could, I did. I um, did. Kind of share what that was like for you. That was, I know it's, just, I always say it, you know, we know that it's sanctuary experience. To me, it was sanctuary explosion. Mm. There was an explosion inside of me that is still there. And it was from the inside out. It started with, I remember it was the group with Hannah. Mm -hmm. And um, but I wasn't, because like I said, I came to assist. So, you know, as the participants was, you know, being healed and taught or trained or whatever was going on, I'm an assistant. So I'm not going, I'm not a participator. If they need me, I'm there for them. You know, it was basically just, the, you know, I just kept praying and saying, Lord, you know, get such to people, blah, blah, blah. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Now everybody the finished. <laughs> and then my apostle said, Oh, you know, come on. I said, No, 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 that's okay. I'm fine. And then she said, No, no, come on. Yeah. So, you know, everybody was finished. And then, you know, so I had my own personal encounter with Anna. Yes. And he, he 
started, you know, talking about go back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, and this is such, you know, you close your eyes and she tells you, and then she's talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, now you're a little girl and you're in this room. Blah, blah, and I could hear everything that she was saying. Mm -hmm. So she says, okay, now you can come out. And I says, no, I'm still in the womb. He thought I was saying womb, the room, like a room. room, room. But I was talking about the birth womb. I hadn't been born yet. Wow. God took me back before I was born. Mm. And then, you know, but after a while, I was like, and I could see myself in the womb. Mm. And all of a sudden, it was like, Phew. God birthed me. Wow. God birthed me. I felt that. I felt the release. Mm. The total release. It was such a beautiful experience. I was like, oh my goodness. So the rejection was over. Wow. Okay. Because I was rejected from the womb. Mm -hmm. Because my birth mother was well later on as I, I'm not gonna go into whole detail but I'll just say this one I am a product of a rape okay wow. so I'm a rape baby <laughs> and they didn't even want to name me I don't know what they was calling me all the time I finally they finally gave me somebody's name that got changed later anyway I guess I was mm -hmm. this baby crying baby whatever wow. but when I had that experience when everything she was saying I could hear and I kept saying, okay, I guess I could, you know, but it was like, no, I was still in the room. Mm. And then all of a sudden it was just like, I remember it as, as if it was just a minute ago. And it was like, it wasn't really dark, dark. It wasn't darkness, but it was kind of like a silhouette type, you know. Mm. And all of a sudden it was like this light <laughs> came on. It was my freedom. Wow. My freedom. Wow. Wow. That's so amazing and so inspiring. And I feel like a broken record saying, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do want to share, because um, you, you helped us, um, everyone who came got to share um, like their experience of the weekend. And so <laughs> we have a polished version of that. That okay. I'm gonna share, and then we have a not so polished version <laughs> that someone got on their cell phone and happened to share with me. Oh no! <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and I want you, I because I, I want you to look back on okay. yourself and the and what I saw, what I saw in the weekend. You know, that first day when you came in, you know, you were nice and polite and and warm. By the end of the weekend, <laughs> the light had come on. The light had come on. And we did some fun stuff, too. We did some mm -hmm. uh, uh, some model walking and a photo shoot. And that photo you saw on the ad for this, uh, for this show, that's from the Sanctuary Experience mm -hmm. Weekend. So I, I'm going to, uh, we asked everybody to share. This is what you shared. Good day, everyone. <laughs> And welcome to Sanctuary Experience. My name is Evangelista Brea, and I have been, had three amazing, exciting, words can I explain what Dallas Cohen has put together. This was a weekend that I would never, ever forget. It was a weekend I came to assist not being a participant, but God in his amazing love, his grace and his mercy, I also became a participant. What I experienced through all of this is a new me, being renewed from the inside out. God poured into me, Dallas ministered to me, my apostle Marguerite ministered to me. Everyone that came in my pathway drop pearls of wisdom, knowledge, encouragement. And for that, I am thankful for. 
So let me tell you something. You want to change? You have to make a change. If you want to be different, you have to step out of your complacencies. I have stepped out of my complacency. I'm not looking back. I'm going forward. I'm going forward because of what God has deposited in me this weekend. If you ever want to change, yes, look for Sanctuary Experience. The information will be there. And trust me, you will never be the same. And most of all, you will never, ever regret it. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> I especially like that because you said, let me tell you something. I was like, good day, girl. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my God. That was <laughs> why. <laughs> you are amazing. You are amazing. And so uh that was the polished version. And I'll I'll just ask like what what where when you look back at yourself, you know, what comes up for you? What are you feeling? I feel like I said, there's a peace. There's a joy. And you know the scripture that said, old things has passed away, and mm -hmm. behold, all things has come become new. Yeah. That's what I feel. Oh, Every day oh. is a new day. Every day is a new experience. Every day, the love of God gets pre-made over me. I'm in his cocoon. I'm in his protective custody. Oh, oh protective custody. Oh my gosh! You got the custody. <laughs> ah, that's just amazing. I just, I, I just love your spirit. I just love your spirit. And so, um, on the last day, we just kind of went around the table, just real chill, not you know, and just uh, so you know, what, what's, how do you feel about the weekend? What has it been for you? Can you share out with people? And this is what happened. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm looking at that face. <laughs> the sanctuary experience is exactly what it has been and will always be. It is etched into my brain, my heart, my very being. Uh, I experienced so much. It could be a book all by itself this, up to this point. I came with no particular expectation because I was not a participant. I came to assist. But God in his awesomeness and his love and his mercy and his kindness, you know, he truly met me. He has freed me, he has delivered me, he has set me free. And truly, this is my new beginning. Yes! From the crown of my head to the very soul of my head. Yes. And no weapon is formed against me, he'll prosper. Because I know who I am. I am his daughter. I am joint heir with him. He chose me from the very foundation. From the womb. <laughs> that was so good. When you experience what I experienced, nobody can. It is so great. Most of all, what I really want to thank Sanctuary Experience. I want to thank God for Minister Dallas Cohen because he said, I want you to do this. I know this is not the first one, but this one, this one was planned for the eon time because he knew I was going to be here. Uh -huh. I mean, because I'm here. He says, okay. You know, he played chess, and he moved pieces. <laughs> I mean, he moved, he moved, he moved. Who would say that I would be living in Tampa, Florida? From March, I came down, and May, God moved me. God moved me, because he knew he wanted to be here. So, Minister, I was born, and God bless you. When I crowned you, you the soul of Yes. Eyes have not seen. Yes. Ears have heard what God has in store for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
<laughs> I saw, I, I was watching you watch yourself. Um, that was pretty special. Yeah. That was pretty special. So we're going to wrap up this hour here on Facebook Live. The after party is on Clubhouse. So if this touched you and you want to ask Evangelist Debrea a question or you have something you want to add, uh, Clubhouse folks, thank you for your patience. We will open the floor soon. Um, and you want to share, join us on Clubhouse. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Dallas Cohen. You can uh, find me there, K-O-H-E-N. Dallas Cohen, the rebound coach uh, on Clubhouse, and join the conversation. And it's it. The name of the room is celebrating her story. Meet Shiro Debrea Bowman. Bowman. It says listen only, but it's about to be uh, open floor, and it's in the Sanctuary XP Club. So feel free to join that. Now I will ask one last question to you here. Um, there's a lot of obstacles when women are being invited to something like this. Oh my gosh, I have to find childcare. I might have to buy a plane ticket. I have to book a hotel room. Oh my gosh, I have to pay this fee for this weekend. Why should they overcome those obstacles? Why is it worth that for someone to get to sanctuary? What is your soul worth? Mm -hmm to be able to live the life that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died for. He set everything in order. And like I said, I was there. And I thank God that don't come with, come to learn, come to be free, come to escape. From yourself. Wow. Because when you escape from yourself, hey, then you're going to begin to live. Mm. And I am so thankful that I lived long enough to even be on this program, to be able to even go through um, what I went through to share. And the sooner you get there, okay. Your change is going to begin. Whew. I'm thankful you lived also. Just I'm thankful you lived, period, period. Full stop. I am thankful you lived. Thank you. Yeah. And for all the living you've yet to do. <laughs> all the living you, you're a beautiful, beautiful spirit. And I'm so <laughs> glad that you are here. I'm so glad I got to share and see a little bit of that beauty uh, that you are. You're an amazing woman and I'm incredibly honored to be a part of your life and have you be a part of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. You're very special to me. Aww. So for those watching, for those listening, if any of that resonated with you, if Evangelist DeBray's story resonated with you, or you have gone through your own story of betrayal, trauma, or abuse, mm -hmm. and enough's enough, join us at the mm -hmm. Nest Sanctuary Experience. It is yes. April 8th through 10th, whew, which is coming up in about a month. A month. <laughs> <laughs> about a month over at Clearwater Beach. You can find more information and contact me, okay? Don't just, like, look at stuff. Like, talk to me mm -hmm. um, at thereboundcoach.com forward slash sanctuary. It's on your screen for those of you who are watching. Uh, thank you so much, Evangelist mm -hmm. Abrea. Thank you, Minister Oh, it was such a pleasure. God, uh, bless you. Such a bless pleasure. You. Bless you. Yes. I received that. Thank you. And for those of you who would like to follow us over on to Clubhouse, please do so. We're in the Sanctuary XP Club. The room is called Celebrating Her Story. Meet Shiro Debrea Bowman. Um, and feel free to uh, listen in. We're about to open the floor on Clubhouse. Uh, and so, Evangelist, if you'd like to join us over there, feel free. Okay. Uh, I'm sure some folks would like to, as they say in Clubhouse, throw some flowers at your head. <laughs> um, to bless you, to really, really bless you. You've been such a blessing to me just uh, hearing your story again. So thank you so much. Um, but thank you to everyone who's joined us here. Evangelist, hang out for a minute. And until next time, everyone, choose life.